we're back for another video in the same exact day as the one I just filmed. Um, but yeah, if you want to see this look on my face, please go watch my palette resurrection of the Too Faced Peanut Butter and Jelly palette. I will link right there. So today, <laughs> we're back for another roast of new releases, except this time, not under the influence of any any substance. This is like my version of an anti-haul because Kimberly Lark, I'm afraid given up on us all together and she said, you know what guys, I've given you everything that you need. It's up to you now to not buy shit you don't need. So I'm just gonna call this what it is and I'm gonna call it a roast. I'm gonna use this opportunity to talk shit about makeup that I may or may not buy. I feel like the reason I did anti-hauls was just so I could talk shit about makeup and brands. And so this just seems a little more on brand for me personally to just do a freaking roast from time to time. And not all of them will be spirited like my last, but that's okay. You guys were like, you know what? I'd like to see y'all. I'd say you used to talk some shit about makeup without being drunk and I'd watch it. And I'd be like, I'm like, I will take the opportunity here to mention some of my favorite anti-haulers, including the crowned princess of anti-hauling, and that is Nisi Pisa. Her name is Nisa, she has a YouTube channel, she does just amazing anti-hauls. I'm calling her the crown princess because I feel like Kimberly Clark would would pass the crown on to her, you know what I'm saying? They call them crown princesses or crown queen, crown duchess? What do you call them? The duchess of, would you call it the duchess of anti-hauls? I don't know. The and another thing is, I'm probably gonna make this a series because there are just so many freaking new releases that I feel like I need a reason not to buy all of them. And I think that people watch anti-hauls for the reason I watch anti-hauls, it's like, I need a reason not to buy it. If there was any inkling in my mind that was like, hey, don't buy that, then an anti-haul is just that little like, Let's go ahead and roast some freaking makeup. This is a good one. I picked the best day to do this because this is the second post on Trend Mood's website. The Greek Goddess Collection. Manny M-U-A. What have you done now? You have made a palette full of neutrals and a blue. Groundbreaking. Warm everything. One blue. Just one. That's all you get. First of all, though, can I say how much I love the actual palette packaging? Medusa. Kind of confused why she's on it because Medusa wasn't a Greek goddess. Hold on, Manny. Hold on. Did nobody on your creative team sit there and be like, so Manny, here's the thing. Medusa isn't, um, isn't a goddess. She was a gorgon. I don't know what you mean by Greek goddess, but... Medusa ain't it. I don't see anything like, oh my God, this is just perfect. Maybe if you're like a huge Manny fan, a fanny, I'll be here all night, guys. Greek goddess, Medusa is not. Creek goddess, on the other hand, which it almost looks like it says Creek goddess. Creek, go no, I'm the Creek goddess. I was raised on a farm. If I ever have a palette come out, I'm gonna call it the Creek goddess. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, oh, Pantone, the color authority of the United States of the world is coming out with its new color of the year, Living Coral. Oh, great. What is even, what Pantone, what, who, Pantone? Hmm? Who are you? And why, why are you the ones that tell us what color matters every year, huh? I don't understand. I don't get it. Everybody talks about Pantone for like a month and everybody's like, oh my God, Pantone this. I'm like, ah, Sephora's got a Pantone palette. And then nobody fucking cares because they shouldn't. I'm not gonna change my favorite color just because Pantone wants me to. Shoot. Oh, here's one. Yeah, mm-mm, this is stupid. I mean, it's like, I feel like, I feel like I'm a little bit biased when I start to critique palettes of this brand. Um, particularly, okay, let's talk about the fact that it's called the Lolita palette, okay? I'm just gonna, let's just talk about that. If anybody doesn't know who Lolita is or what Lolita is, it's a classic novel written by Vladimir Nabokov. It's an incredible novel. Frankly, I really, really enjoyed that book. It's great. I had to read it when I was in college and do essays and, you know, analyses and all that stuff on it. Um, but it's literally about a child predator, okay? The whole novel from beginning to end, it's about this stepdad creep and he is creepy from the get-go like before you even find out he is like a pedophile you you just you get a sense of how creepy and weird he is but basically his name is Humbert Humbert and what he does is he grooms this young adolescent girl to be his like the love of his life it is 
the creepiest thing ever. Her name is not Lolita, but he calls her Lolita. He's like, Lolita, love of my life, fire of my loins, blah, blah, blah. And she's like 13. It is so gross, okay? Now, I understand that Lolita has since become like a street fashion. I don't think that's what Kat's going for here. Just correct me if I'm wrong. What she has had in her makeup line is the theme of classic writers. For instance, Lovecraft, like H.P. Lovecraft. So I think it's safe to say that Lolita is named after Lolita, as in Vladimir Nabokov's Lolita, which is just creepy. For whatever reason, I thought that Lolita, like when it first came out, was like named after like the fashion style Lolita. But is that really Kat's thing? Like, is it her thing? I, I don't really think so. Why not triple down on that by naming a palette after it too? She has shades in here like Corazon, which is heart. Um, con amor, with love, hermosura, like prettiness, besitos, which is kisses, like little kisses in a Lolita palette. No thanks. No fucking thanks. Aside from the whole anti-Semitism, anti-vax thing, uh, that's fucking gross. I have, to, I have to put them together because I know that they would hate it and I don't like them. So let's talk about Jeffree Star's new... Um, Northern Lights Holiday Palette. Now, first of all, I'm kind of mad that he took the name Northern Lights because I feel like some other brand could have come out with something really cool named Northern Lights. Oh God. As, as somebody who's like a backpacker, hiker, camper, I, I'm just, I'm enthralled by the idea of one day seeing the Northern Lights in a, you know, backcountry setting. And here it is in a highlighter palette. Mm. Highlighter palette. Highlighter palettes are the most impractical thing ever invented. You see it when you go to TJ Maxx and Marshalls and you see those Anastasia glow kits all over the fucking place because nobody ever wanted them. They're constantly on sale. They're constantly being de-stashed by Sephora and Ulta and all that because nobody's buying them. Sell individual highlighters, all right? This whole highlight palette thing, I get why they did it. It's like, oh my God, this is a good money grab. People will buy this. All we have to do is market it. They don't need it. They'll never use half those shades in there, but all we need to do is just pump that money into marketing. People will buy it. People will think they need highlighter palettes, just like this freaking Jeffree Star one. There's pink, there's blue, there's yellow, there's white, there's peach. Now there are like three shades in this palette that I could see myself wearing on like a daily base, like a daily highlight. Okay, maybe like two. The rest are just, no, no they're not practical. Like nobody's going to wear a blue highlight every day of their life. You'll never make your way through that below freezing highlight. I will bet you as much money as that palette costs that you couldn't go through that in a lifetime. All right. Same with the rest of these. What in the actual hell? $54 for a freaking highlighter palette. I think this is his response to like Rihanna's palette that came out that I talked shit about too, because nobody freaking needs it. It's so weird to me that like this is the new trend and people are gonna be like, oh my God, but you can use them as eyeshadows too. It's like, great, because I need a freaking giant frosty blue eyeshadow. What? I don't care about, I, I, I don't purchase from him anyway, but even if I did, I'm just so over these stupid highlighter palettes. I'm so getting over them. So this is something that I kind of glossed over in my last roast and by glossed over I mean my eyes were glossed over and I didn't really understand what I was seeing and therefore could not roast it because if I had seen it and known what it was I would have roasted the absolute shit out of it and that is the Wu-Tang Clan and Milk Makeup Collab. Holy balls. Mm. Like I grew up watching MTV and like the Wu-Tang Clan and Killa Bees and all that. Like, I absolutely loved Wu-Tang when I was growing up. I mean, I still do. I saw Jizza in concert a few years ago. He is incredible. He's like an 80-year-old man, but he is up there just kicking ass. One of the best shows I've ever been to, and I've been to, like, a lot of fucking shows. But Jizza's right up there at the top, right up there near the top, all right? That being said, the fact that they're, like, releasing makeup, like, or collaborating with Milk, I'm, I'm kind of confused by that. I'm wondering if, like... Like, I don't know what inspired this collaboration or who reached out to whom. Like, whose idea was it? Because surely Riz is not like over there like, you know what I would really need? You know what would go so great with this new soundtrack I'm writing for this cool ass movie? Lipstick. That's what these rhymes are missing. Bright red lipstick with a dragon wrapped around it. 
Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm just really confused by this entire thing. And the one thing that I am the most confused by, and I believe, of course, um, I think, I mean, I saw Nisi, Nisi Pisa talk about these in her one of her anti-hauls. So I recommend hearing what she has to say about them. But $55, are you kidding me? Like, what the hell? It's so funny to me because it's like Wu-Tang Clan fans aren't the type of people, in my personal opinion, to spend $55 on a lipstick, right? And of all brands, Milk Makeup would collaborate with Wu-Tang. Like, that's kind of strange to me. It feels like that was a little bit of a mismatch when it comes to, like, a collaboration effort. I feel like if Wu-Tang were to collaborate with any brand, it would be something, like, no known for their edginess, maybe, like, Urban Decay or something, because... I mean, to be perfectly honest, Urban Decay sounds like it could be the name of a Wu-Tang song or album. So Milk, though, that would be like a Kings of Leon collaboration. Like, why doesn't Kings of Leon collaborate with Milk Makeup? Now, there's your freaking band collab right there, huh? Or even Neutral Milk Hotel, because they're both hipster bands, and Milk is a very hipster makeup line. And also, Kings of Leon has a song called Milk, one of the greatest songs on the planet. I've seen them in concert. They're amazing. Wu-Tang, though? I don't get it. I don't get it. Oh, these, this is great. Okay, and I'm going to roast this. It's not just It Cosmetics, but It Cosmetics has one. And then I saw one that Helen Mirren, I love Helen Mirren. Oh my God, I love her so much. Is actually in an ad for on like regular TV. I think it's made by like L'Oreal or somebody. I don't know. But they both have the same pitch. And that is a cream with a rosy tone. Rosy tone. And they both say, Rosy tone. This is a rosy toned moisturizer. Yeah, because that's what women want to put more redness into their skin after estrogen has already wreaked havoc on us by giving us redness in our skin. I don't really know any woman who's trying to cover their entire face in redness. Rosy tone my ass. Oh shit. Come on. How stupid do they think we are? Oh, I just, but it's got a pink jar. Oh my God, it's pink. It's just enjoyable for me to put on because for me, I like luxury skincare, not because of what it actually does for my skin, but because of the way it makes me feel in my heart when I put it on my face. After spending $43.68 on a little jar of moisturizer just because it's pink, I can't with the fucking rosy tone. Helen Mirren, stop it. It Cosmetics, stop it. Enough ranting about this rosy tone shit, but at least now everybody else gets to hear me rant about it and my husband's not listening to it. Every time the damn commercial comes on, I'm like, are you fucking kidding? Oh, give me a fucking break. Rosy tone, son of a bitch. Let's, let's, let's circle back to one of the things in my last roast, and that was the Urban Decay on the run. Eyeshadow palettes, shortcut, detour, and bailout. First, look at these palettes. I was like, oh my god, they're pretty. Like, I did not even realize just how right I was in my first critique of these palettes at how all brown they are. How all one note they are. Now, Gash is in one of them, and I was like, oh my god, I want Gash. But then somebody was like, actually, you can get Gash as a single now, and I'm like, oh! but yeah, I was like, I was, I did not realize just how right I was. They're like all brown. There's like a purple and a blue and like br a, a red, and like that's it. They're $25 each. That's not a bad price, actually. But at the same time, like, and I'm not, like, again, I'm not completely counting these all out because I haven't swatched them. So I don't know if they're, like, some sort of, like, fantastical formula that can't be found anywhere in nature. At this point, I'm pretty sure I was right. It's all brown. It's all brown. Ooh, here's one I want. Wet n' Wild Photo Focus. Now, I am super pumped about these. The Wet n' Wild um, setting sprays that are cucumber, rose, coconut. But I'm going to have to say it because I'm sure other people have. This is a total ripoff of MAC Fix Plus and their, like, scented line. But screw them. They made those all limited edition. They made their freaking bed. Now Wet n' Wild's going to lay in it. I want all of them. No, I want the coconut one and the cucumber one and the rose one. All right. NARS breaks history once more with another palette that looks exactly like all the others they've ever released. Thanks, NARS. Oh, okay. Now I have to roast this because it's beautiful. I've seen the reviews. I've seen the swatches. And of course, I want every single one of these. But let's be real. No one will ever use these in the amount of time it takes to go through a freaking eyeshadow, especially one of these eyeshadows, 
before it expires. Now, ColourPop says that these have a shelf life of 12 months once opened. So once you open your Super Shock Shadow or blush or whatever it is or highlight, they say that it will last a year. I'm assuming before the quality starts to go down, before it starts to dry out to the point that it doesn't have the same appearance as it once did. Who in the absolute hell is going to use $100 worth of Super Shock Shadows and the amount of time it takes to go through them before they all expire, given the fact that people that do buy this probably already have an extensive makeup collection? Mm -mm. Now, I know ColourPop is supposed to be an affordable brand, but this, in my opinion, is not an affordable thing for them to do because the people that kind of want to buy their stuff buy it because it's cheap and good. They don't buy it because they want 4,000 eyeshadows all at once, or 25, I should say, for $100, $100, all the super shock shadows. I'm sorry, but that's just so impractical to me. They should have sold this in quads or they should have given you the option like, hey, you can buy these in singles or you can buy these in quads. The thing about their Super Shock shadows, and I've only owned a couple in my time, but they are hard to go through because I use them as lid shades. I don't use mattes and shimmers from that collection. I've never had one of their mattes. I had one of their blushes that was matte and it was like okay, but I still never used it up until it dried out and started kind of crumbling up on me. So I don't understand. I just, this doesn't make any sense to me. This just seems like, of course, an obvious money grab. Like every mom is going to be like, oh my God, this is totally going to repair the relationship I have with my 13 year old. That is not the Christmas gift that's going to fix everything and all the damage that's been done between you and your teenage daughter, but it might help because she's gonna fucking love that if you get it for her. Moving on, I wish they would sell those as singles. And I think Tim Talia was like, please sell these as singles. Like, I think she knew what everybody was thinking. She's like, why the fuck are you selling all 25 of these in one giant set? Come on. Yeah, I've been going on and on about this for a really long time, though I haven't even really scratched the surface of new releases. So, as I said, this is going to be a series. I'm going to make a very pointed effort to come out with these at least twice a month, if not more often than that, because these are easy videos to do. They're not that hard for me to edit. I can kick them out, kick them out. I can crank them out like that. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, <laughs> thank you all for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber and you wanna be, go ahead and subscribe on your way out. I will also link my Instagram in the down box as well as my Patreon if you'd like to support me on there. So I hope you all liked it. I'll see y'all next time, later.